So after the spawn, everybody thinks that bass immediately leave the bank and go out to the ledges or out to deeper water in your lake, and that's where they stay all summer long until the fall. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. While there is a population of fish that go out deep, there is also a population of fish that never leave the grass that's in your lake. And so today what I want to talk about is how to break down that grass and how to catch more bass while you're fishing it. So stick around, you guys are not going to want to miss this video. So we're out here flipping grass, and flipping grass can be one of the most fun bites, but it can also be one of those bites where you struggle to figure out where those fish are at. Because they can be so spread out, it's literally like finding a needle in a haystack. And so everybody talks about fishing points, fishing bars, fishing all this other types of structure. But what you have to do is you have to mold that into fishing grass. You're looking for high spots, you're looking for low spots, you're looking for points, you're looking for bends, you're looking for funnels, you're looking for all of these different things but you have to look at the grass in that kind of way. I see it too many times where people get set on fishing grass and they just start flipping grass but there's no rhyme or reason to why they're flipping the grass and so they end up burning hours and hours and hours without getting any bites. And so that's what I really want to talk about today is where you need to look to get more bites with grass and I'm going to break down some of my gear that I use to help me get more bites once I find those fish. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is one of the misconceptions that there is with flipping grass and that is that you only flip grass during the middle of the day when the sun is at its highest point. That couldn't be further from the truth. My best bite when it comes to flipping grass is first thing in the morning and that's something that people do not capitalize on. They spend their time throwing top waters or throwing moving baits which is you know are equally good to catch bass but you can catch some of the biggest fish of the entire day flipping first thing in the morning some of the best times to get some of your bigger bites. I know that wasn't a giant, but it just goes to show that they eat really good flipping in the morning. Here we have ounce and a quarter tungsten weight on there because that grass is pretty heavy. Uh, and honestly, that grass is pretty deep. And so that ounce and a quarter gives me a fast fall and it breaks through that grass and keeps it clean going down through there. And that's how you'll know what size weight to use is how heavy do you have to go to keep your bait clean and keep it falling freely to the bottom because that is one of the most important things when you're flipping grass is keeping it falling free. We also pair that with a Trocar Monster flipping hook right there. I can't remember the exact size, but I'll have it linked down below. That Cortland 65 pound silent flip braid, super, super important in this clean water to have a nice, clean, silent presentation going down through there. But we're gonna get back up on the trolling motor, see if we can't catch some more. I talk about fishing grass, it's exactly like what I talked about earlier, where you have to identify the key features in that grass. And I said it can be like fishing a needle in a haystack, but it doesn't have to be. When you, un when you understand the key features of it and when you understand how to break it down, it can really be like shooting fish in a barrel. There will be some dead water, but you'll have a whole lot more success once you know where those key areas are. The key areas that I like to talk about are the points in the grass, you have the bellies of the grass, and then you have the sides of points. And then you can also have depressions, and you can also have high spots, and you have to figure out what those key areas are on your lake and where they happen to be setting up for that particular time of year. Because once you figure out the time of year, then all of a sudden it makes perfect sense. Like during the spawn, you wanna be closer to the bank on the inside grass edge. On the, on the other side of that, after the spawn, you wanna start making your way out toward the edges and during the summertime, you wanna be out on those far edges and in those depressions. Something like that. So that's what we're gonna look at today and that's what I'm gonna break down using some GoPro imagery and using some aerial imagery to give you guys a better idea as to what it looks like. So when you look at a lake from an outer perspective, when you're looking at it from a, a farther away perspective, you can see there's a lot of possibilities for all of these grass edges. But as you zoom in and you follow my cursor, you can see some of the highlighted points that this lake has right here. You'll see there's some smaller points and that's what you need to do is just start running those high percentage points with your flipping and your pitching techniques because that's where those fish are really gonna wanna set up. And as we get up here, you can see all of the grass that's along the edge of this lake. Up here, we have a major grass flat. And that's a key area right there. And you can see that point right there. And you follow that edge, 
that's where those fish are going to want to sit this time of year. And this is really highlighting the key areas, the sides of these points right here, the tips of the points. And then if you even go over to a Navionics perspective, we're on a pretty popular lake right here, you can see some of the key areas. You know, when you're looking at it from a huge perspective, it looks immense and like there could be fish everywhere. But as you zoom in and get closer, you'll still see there's some highlighted points along the bank. And some of those fish never leave those areas. Even over here in this little main lake pocket, you can see there's an extended point right there, another rounded point right there. And it's about getting on those points, figuring out where that good grass is, and using your electronics to really key in to figure out where those fish are going to be setting up. So one thing that I really want to key in on is that fish don't always set up on the tip of points like you see right here. As I start to zoom in, you'll see that that's a nice defined point, but what happens is a lot of people pull up on the very tips, make a few casts, pitch the very tips of those points, and then they leave. What I like to focus on is the sides of those points. That seems to be where I have the best luck because it seems like those fish set up better there because there's less pressure, but they still get almost the exact same reward for setting up on the edge of it instead of the tip. So right here, what we're going to show you is some bends in the grass. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a point right here. But if you also look, there's a bend right there. And the beautiful part of a bend is if you watch that cursor, you can see it highlights that bait fish travel along it. And that's where they meet is at the bend right there. You know, the point is a great area for them to ambush, but it's also the bend is a really, really critical place because everything that's traveling that grass line gets cornered into that bend. So another thing that we have that I really like to fish is depressions in the grass. And you can see right here, we have a pretty popular little area. But if you look at it with Google Earth, you'll see there's some deeper pockets of deeper water. And that's where those fish are going to set up when they're up on top of those flats. They'll get in those holes and that's where they're going to want to hang out because that grass is just a little bit deeper and they can get away from people a little bit easier. And that's where bait fish are going to congregate. We can also look at it from a Navionics perspective on this big flat right here. You can see there's a, there's a big depression on the middle of this flat. There's a huge cut that comes in where that water is just a little bit deeper. You know, the rest of the flat's pretty shallow. If you go up and down, there's a little cut right there. But if you go up into this, you can see there's this one channel that runs through the whole grass flat, and then there's that big depression. So that's where those fish are going to want to set up. So you'll notice a lot of people like to flip with a 7.3 or a 7.6, and I do that. I do that a lot, but I do that when I'm flipping in less than 6 feet of water. If as soon as I start to get out over 6 feet of water, that's where I love my 7.11, because you'll notice when I make these casts, when I flip it, I fade my rod over my head, and what that does is that gives that bait slack. I will flip back over my head, close the reel, and that gives that bait free range to fall. If you're using a 7.3 or a 7.6, a lot of times you're having to try to feed that bait line when we're flipping out in like eight to 12 feet of water, 14 feet. And it just makes for really cumbersome flipping and pitching. And so that's why I go with that 7.11. And it also gives me more leverage to get those fish out of deeper grass. If you find yourself using a 7.3 or 7.6 and you hook a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pounder, you're gonna get your butt whooped. You know, I literally hooked a muskie not 20 minutes ago, and I was able to get that out of the grass and handle that until it cut me off. But I was able to handle a muskie with this rod, and so if a six pounder eats it, I can more than handle that, which is what you need to be prepared for when you're flipping this deep grass. So the gear that I like to use, I have two different setups. The main setup that I like to use is a 711 Heavy Essence Rod. It's made by Arc and it has a very parabolic bend, but I like that heavy. I don't like the extra heavy because the heavy loads up better. As you can see in a lot of these fish catches, when I hit those fish, that whole rod bows up because you're gonna have those fish going in and out of grass when you set the hook. Today, we're flipping in around eight to 14 feet of grass, fishing some scattered hydrilla, milfoil, a lot of eel, there's uh, some stringy grass mixed in and some cabbage. And so when you hook one of those fish, as you're pulling it out, it's gonna be going through layers, right? So when you first set the hook, it's gonna run into a layer and it's gonna get stuck. And it not always just gets stuck and you wind it in. A lot of times you hit them, they get into the grass and they break free and they, you know, they keep coming. And so there's points where if you have too heavy of a rod and that lets off, you have a big weight on there. I'm flipping an ounce and a quarter weight today. Sometimes I have a two ounce rigged up 
If that pressure gets left off, those fish can throw that bait extremely easily, which is why I go with the 7-Eleven Heavy because pretty much every single fish that I hook on this lake, six pounds or less is gonna be what you're catching. So if I hook it, I'm flipping it every time. There's not gonna be a fish that I don't flip with this setup, which is why I wore my boat flips only hat today. You know, that was the main reason why, because I knew what I was gonna do today. So the line that I run, you guys have heard me talk about it many times before, 65 pound Cortland silent flip. I don't flip anything under 50. I just don't because a two pounder feels like a nine in a lot of this grass and you need the tools to be able to get that out. And that silent flip, we have super clear water, makes less noise going in and out of that grass, helps me get additional bites, which is super, super key. One of the things that I really want to point out is the reel. This is an ARC G5. It's a heavy reel. Okay, all the bearings in it, they are extra heavy, okay? I don't use any plastic carbon fiber handles. It is all metal. The reel is metal. And what I like about it is it is a seven to one gear ratio. I see and hear too many guys talk about flipping an eight to one, nine to one gear ratio reel. Well, what happens when you start to get above a seven to one is you lose your torque capabilities. I like to have that seven to one gear ratio reel because it allows me to really winch on those fish and pull them out. When you start to get into an eight to one, a nine to one, you don't have that turning power to be able to pull those fish out. And when you hook big fish in thick grass, you tend to lose them. And so that's why I really like the seven to one gear ratio reel. On the business end, you already heard me talk about, I have an ounce and a quarter. Ounce and a quarter is usually my go-to, but you wanna throw whatever weight you can get in and out of that grass easily. Sometimes those fish will be on a five eighths. A lot of times they'll be on an ounce and a half ounce and three quarter, two ounce, you know? If I'm throwing an ounce and a quarter and I can see my line hesitating as it's sinking, I'm gonna go up until that bait freely goes in and out. That's gonna be the key for me. That's gonna get me the best reaction strikes possible. On the business end, a Z-Man Palmetto Bug. I love the Palmetto Bug because it, it allows tech and it holds up extremely well throughout a day. A lot of baits when you're flipping, they're gonna get pinchers ripped off because there's bluegill, there's perch, there's crappies, there's a rock bass, there's all kinds of other species in this grass and the wear and tear of it going in and out of the grass. I've been flipping this morning for probably four hours and I've gone, this is my third bait. You know, and I've probably caught seven or eight fish, nothing crazy, but just the wear and tear going in and out of the grass. If you're using traditional style baits that aren't Elastec, you're gonna go through a lot of baits, especially pinchers. So that's why I like that. And on the business end, I have a Trocar Monster Flipping Hook and a 5 odd Because I have this ounce and a quarter weight, I have to go up in hook size to be able to penetrate that fish's mouth. Because that hook kicks out, but the bigger the weight, the more it pops those fish's mouth open. I have that tied with a snell knot, so that way you saw it kicks that hook out. You'll hook every fish in the bottom jaw or in the roof of the mouth. And with that Trocar Monster flipping hook, every one of them is gonna be pegged. And so that's why I flip every single one. But the bigger the weight, the more it pops those fish's mouth open, which is why you see my hook set is not a drop the rod and hit it hook set. My hook, my hook set is most oftentimes I feel it and I just lean because I'm just pulling. If you set the hook really hard where you slack line it, you will blow that fish's mouth open and you will miss more fish and you'll skin hook more fish. So that's something that's really, really important to keep in mind when you're out here flipping. So the key with what we're doing is you wanna find where that grass basically meets the surface. So if you look at the, at the pan optics right there, you can see out to my right, there's really not a whole lot. And then to my left, all of a sudden that grass comes up and you can see right where it meets the surface. That's where I want to start flipping, right where I can start to visually see the grass. That's going to be my key to start flipping. It's even with that deeper grass, that's what I'm going to do. Unless they run the choppers down the lake, which a lot of times if you have a lake that has a lot of grass, they'll run choppers through it or they'll spray some of it. That's the only time I'll flip shorter stuff. But for the most part, I just drive around and go till I see the grass, whether with my graph where it comes up, like you can see right there where it gets tall, or I will just look with my eyes visually. All right, guys, let's do the Bible verse for today. So we're going to go back into the book of James because I really, really just enjoy the book of James. And so we're going to do James 1.5. And what that says is it says, If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. So I think too often we find ourselves asking for things from other people. We find ourselves trying to figure it out ourselves. 
when the real key reality is we need to be asking the one who created us, you know? So if you are lacking in any area of your life, whether it be love, wisdom, you know, character, any of those things, you need to ask God for it. And so all too often, he's not just going to give you it, right? He's not just going to make it pop into your life, but you will go through trials that will give you that in the long term. You know, that's what's going to be the best for you because it's going to create that part of you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along. But God bless every single one of you guys, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.